Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 4th July 2017. The first article, the organizing principle of lynch mobs. Remember this point. In any country, a political community is created through organizing people and certain binding factors among them. In India, our national movement, cricket, democracy, rights to the people, respect for the diversity, all these are the factors that have created political community. It means a constitutional democracy that is existing in India is the basis for our unity and respect the diversity it holds for, a respect for the diversity our constitution holds for, is keeping us united as we move forward. As the divisive factors are gaining importance, then automatically it can be a threat to the national unity. So in these circumstances, let us understand the fundamental rights. These fundamental rights provide one of the binding factors to our unity and also important element of our constitutional democracy. So article 21 is the most important. It talks about right to life and liberty of the citizens. According to this, state shall not take away the right or liberty of the citizen except by the procedure established by law. So, initially in A.K. Gopalan case, what the Supreme Court held is this. Procedure established by law is not questionable. Later in Menaka Gandhi case, it has revised its earlier judgment and connected with the principles of natural justice. And what it has stated is, any procedure established by law that meant to take away the life or liberty of an individual shall be fair, reasonable and just. It shall not be arbitrary and fanciful. So here, growth of cow vigilantism and taking away of the lives, it is ultimately a violation of Article 21 of the Constitution if a state inaction is involved in the process. So in these circumstances, we have to see that a fragmentation of the society is happening in the name of nationalism, vigilantism, etc. So the second factor is the society is also getting ghettoized. The defenseless people, these are facing the most trouble in the country, that is minorities and Dalits. So what the article here mean is this, these defenseless people, they are being thrown to the corners of the public spaces and they are expected to protect themselves without the support of the state. And also, the majority community is not willing to support the minority community. So, Ahmedabad is a typical example. Where the spatial fragmentation has occurred, where no house has been offered by the Hindu majority to the minority, and they are pushed to the corner and um, it is leading to spaces getting degenerated, public spaces getting degenerated. So added to that, um, a ghettoization is coming up um, with when the civic communities are being considered in these areas where these people are pushed to. So democratization of public spaces, fighting the discrimination and protecting the people from vigilantes, all these are the responsibilities of the state. These are the factors that can keep us bound together. That is what this article is talking about. The next article is nothing learned from history. You know that recently Narmada Control Authority has given permission to raise the height of Sardar Sarovar Dam. So if you take our history, the larger dams have caused more poverty and misery rather than the benefit. The people who are supporting the larger dams may argue in favor of economic growth, agricultural prosperity, electricity, etc. But however, if you carefully observe here, the larger dams suffers worse from siltation. Most of the dams across the world face this particular problem. As the size of the dam increases, the problem of siltation is also bound to increase and added to the desiltation is a complex task. And second is, as you block the flow of the fresh water at the Asherine level, salinity of the water is bound to increase. Because of this, it is affecting the biodiversity. And 
displacement india has a very poor record so in this context the rehabilitation provided is only to the project affected people and they are defined as the people who lost the a home or an agricultural land it means agricultural laborers fishermen who all are dependent on these water bodies they do not get any rehabilitation so in this context um, we, it appears that we fail to learn from our history with regard to the failure of management of water resources the next article open acres so in this article we are going to talk about our hydrocarbon policy and associated policies that is open acreage licensing policy and data repository development of data repository national data repository now previously government used to call for the auctioning of the certain blocks of land which the people interested in exploration has to buy from the government now under open acreage licensing policy it is the people who will identify the lands which they want to buy and they propose it to the government and government will call the auction for those it means rather than government making decision what has to be auctioned it is the people who will take forward the decision and second is um, national data repository it means all the geological information will be provided in this um, and it will be made available to the people who are interested to explore the oil and natural gas obviously it will have help the investors to make informed decisions and you know that india has an objective to re- to decrease the imports of oil and gas by 10% by 2022 so if this objective has to be achieved we have to increase or renew the focus on indigenous production so this policy can be helpful to the government to the extent the next is the delta miracle so this is about sundarbans the sundarbans are fast losing their uh, ecological space you know that these are the mangroves world largest mangroves they have environmental economic importance and added to that biodiversity is a uh, very much rich in these areas due to climate change have arals and then rapid economic activity in this particular area pressure from the demography all these are making the sundarbans to lose their significance so in this context government can access various finances decrease the demographic pressures economic pressures and can practice eco tourism to protect the sundarbans that is what this article talks about and now go to the open it page they may call it anti national in a democracy citizens have a right to question the government and its policies and it is part of his constitutional right so if um, a debate with regard to the government policy or action is if it is put into a binary of national and anti national a constructive debate cannot happen any debate or criticism acts as a feedback loop to the government um, and it will help it to correct its course when government is closing this feedback loops obviously it can uh, it has to pay a huge price for the same so any debate shall not be put into a binary of nationalism versus anti nationalism in a democracy the argument can find a golden mean somewhere in between so a critical argument is also critical for functioning of a vibrant democracy why we should speak up for al jazeera understand media has a significant role in a democracy now keep the al jazeera away because it got finances from the qatar royal family the ownership of the media is a major issue or controversy now it is royals who are owning the share in the al jazeera but when you come to the various news channels it is the corporate houses the major criticism is um, the editorial independence for the media houses is missing and more and more they are uh, they are practicing or provide serving the interests of their own investors or masters and second point over here is um, al jazeera has provided for an alternative voice um, to the existing mainline media invested or developed by the west such as cnn or bbc 
and second media is a reflection of cho- voice of the society and reflection of the people so it need to be protected in whatever form it is so all jazeera if need to be protected we have to collectively raise the voice that is what this article talks about now let's go to the front page so prime minister modi in cs meet chartered accountants meet that they are deregistering 1 lakh companies with a single stroke of a pen so now government is going to launch money laundering probe on these deregistered firms the government says it is determined to move away from or to unearth the black money and to fight against the shell companies which are used to root this black money and then we can strike anywhere in india his chief sayed salahuddin who is hisbul hisbul chief or hisbul mujahuddin chief what he is been regarded recently as a special ter- category terrorist by the united states government and he, he passed a threat that they have the necessary capability to attack india at the time of their choice so it is again we need to put it in the perspective of terrorism now israel backs india's defense against terrorism no israel places itself in comparison with india and india is a victim of terrorism and israel also tries to project itself as a victim of terrorism and second is india israel have a strong defense cooperation in spite of this at this trip of prime minister modi they are bringing in a strategic partnership in non security non security related areas such as agriculture water security food security etc and the third thing is the prime minister modi is the first prime minister of india to visit israel marking the 25 years of opening relations with the country let's go to the nation page supreme court allows abortion of failing fetus ailing fetus you know that as per the prevention of oh, sorry uh, um, as per the pcpndt act pre conception prenatal diagnostic techniques act any abortion that has to happen less than 20 weeks it has become already a controversy supreme court of india has allowed a woman with an ailing fetus to get it aborted even after 20 weeks that's what is this case is about now let's go to if you go to the i mean the news page indian embassy to remain in tel aviv you know that the jerusalem is recognized as the capital by israel state to itself and jerusalem is a disputed land between israel and palestine so Trump in his electoral election rhetoric stated that he will ship the US embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem but he also dropped that idea India is nowhere moving forward um, with regard to this contempt co action against Arundhati Roy you know that criminal contempt is used to muffle the voice of the various independently or else various writers journalists and independently voiced people so contempt criminal contempt is also filed against miss Arundhati Roy who is a Booker Prize winner and last page I gave you the notes and the notes is available at likes.in/civilsprep thank you very much and all the best